Welcome to the App Advisory Show, your fortnightly dose of all things cloud accounting, apps, and app advisory. Hi, folks. Thanks for tuning in. So this is our panel session as part of the App Advisory Summit. My name is Matt Flanagan. I run a business called Apicus, and we help accounting firms with their adoption of cloud accounting and the whole ecosystem helping them with app advisory. Um, so this session today is about the past, the present, and the future of the cloud accounting and app advisory world. And I've got some great guests on uh, who are going to talk us through a little bit about their experience of the past, the present, and the future, uh, and give us some of their insights. So we will start with Nicola. Morning, Nicola. Morning. I'm Nicola Heath. I work at Richardson Swift and Bath as a client advisor. We have approximately 30 staff, um, and I look after a portfolio of clients just reviewing their accounts to see if we can help them save any tax anywhere. Perfect, thank you very much, Nicola. Ben? Uh, I'm Ben Steele, I run Steele Financial based in Bristol. Um, small firm, fully digital and cloud based, and team of six at the moment. Great, thank you very much for joining us, Ben. Aaron? Uh, so I'm Aaron Sutton, I uh, work at Garbett and Elliott in York. I'm a cloud solutions architect, so trying to help them change the way clients use their accounting software and tech. Uh, we've got two offices, one in York and Leeds, and about 200 employees across the two offices. Great stuff. Right, well, thanks for joining me. So we've got some different types of firms um, that you guys are part of, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get in. So we're going to talk a little bit about the, the past, maybe what you started with, some of the softwares, a bit about what you see the present, and then into the future. Um, and next 20, 25 minutes, we'll... Uh, We'll find out what you guys are into. Right, so I'm going to just share the first question. First question, what was the first piece of software you used when you started working in the accounting profession? So let's start with Nicola. I think mine was Vistopia, which I think was part of CCH, but I'm not even sure if it still exists. It was... Right. <laughs> It was fine, it worked, but yeah, now we use Iris, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's a lot better. <laughs> and what did it do? Biztopia, is that what you said it was called? Yeah, Biztopia. So it did, it was pretty good, to be honest. Um, I think I started in the accountancy probably 15 years ago, so I'm fairly recent. But yeah, it was, it was average, but yeah, Iris is better. <laughs> Very good. So I'm sure some people listening think, oh, I remember that one. I think I know that one. <laughs> ben, what about yourself? Uh, first bit of software was VT Transactions, so it was a desktop-based, sort of very Excel-based piece of software. Um, lots of lots of basic inputting, no bells and whistles at all, but I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was the future at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still using it? Do you still dabble? Uh, I think we used our last client on it about 12 months ago. Yeah, okay. don't think I missed it. <laughs> uh, Aaron, what about you? Well, my account of freshman only really started about four or five years ago, so it's not as interesting as, as uh, Nicola and Ben. So really the first piece of software was Sage, um, just Sage packages, um, even their accounts package kind of internal usage. But yeah, nowhere near as interesting or as unheard of. Okay. And just so, so that's what you started with. When did you guys engage with cloud? I'll go back to Nicola on this. Ooh, so I probably would have... How long ago would it have been? Probably five or six years ago. So we started using um, Zero would have been the first one. Um, okay. And I thought it was amazing because I we moved on to Sage as well, Sage Desktop. And again, I thought that was great at the time. But as soon as Zero came in, it just changed everything. Okay, excellent. So five, six years ago. Ben? Yeah, probably about the same time, about six years ago. Um, and that was when I was, that's before I started my own practice. And the firm I was in, we I think we were introduced to Zero. We did about eight months on Zero. Move, start to move all the clients over. The boss at the time sort of changed his mind, wanted to try QuickBooks. So then we spent another eight months changing everybody over to QuickBooks. Um, and then luckily I left at that point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and Aaron, what about you? About three to four. So yeah, it was kind of like a horrible year or two with, with Sage, and then. Uh, when I moved firms, that was it. It was a kind of a cloud practice there. So it was, yeah, just zero. And that's it. Never looks back, really. 
Excellent. Right. Okay. So we had a little bit there about you. So, so actually, you're pretty. I'd say veterans in this world of cloud. Really, if you if you've been touching it five six years ago, um, although to be fair, cloud was probably pretty different back five six years ago. The first one that um, that we utilised actually and got involved was actually cash flow with a K. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a local chap as well. This is about 2013, 14. So yeah, about the same time. Um, and there was a local chap who's also building a cloud accounting system, which looked very similar to the Zeros, QBOs, free agents. I don't actually know, ever know what happened to him, but he was having a good go at selling it, but he mm -hmm. never had the pockets of the other guys to get the marketing and stuff moving. So, okay. So mm -hmm. thanks a lot for that. So let, let's go on to the, some of the, the next questions. I will just bring these um, up now. So let's get this one. So what's the biggest change you've seen happen to your role as an accountant in regards to adopting digital ways of working? So, you know, whether that be something internal, uh, the, the way you work, or maybe it's the way you engage with clients or maybe the way clients engage with you. So I'll start with Ben on this one. Um, be interested to see what, what your view is on this one. Um, I think it is the expectation that clients now, especially new clients, already know what it is. And I think a couple of years ago, the role was to introduce them to it, explain the benefits of it, explain what it even was and, and try and convince them to go to it. I think a big part of our, our role change is actually expecting people to know what cloud accounting is, having heard of it, having already been on it. And then our role is now to improve that, um, improve the systems, um, check the systems, streamline them, and add value um, on top of just using cloud accounting. Okay, so you're very much cloud focused, digital ways of engagement as much as possible. We'll come back to the education point about there's an assumption that, that our, our businesses and the, the economy is up to grasp, that has the grasp of a cloud account that we may have. And I think that's a, an interesting point we'll touch on. Uh, Aaron, what about you? Yes, when I first started, it was, you know, stat accounts, you know, 12, 12 months has passed since, you know, the year, well, not 12 months, this is the year, but the year end's gone and you, you're looking back, it was always looking backwards to begin with preparing stuff based on information you couldn't remember. Uh, but now it's more kind of looking forwards. It's, it is that forward looking view of, right, we know what's happened, we've kind of got through that, but we need to plan for the next couple of months, next six months and what is the next couple of years like and having that tech at your fingertips has made that more possible i think for us as accountants is it was based on assumptions previously you know take it out of, of, of the system and put it into excel and, and fiddle with it there but the tech we've got now means it's quicker to get that information and it's a lot easier to produce and it looks a bit better as well so yeah it's, it's more of a you know hands-on let's let's look forward let's not worry about the past uh, that's been a gun, can't control that. So let's let's see what we can do now. Great stuff, Nicola. What about what about you? Um, for me, it's more about the <clears throat> preparing side of things. So beforehand, we would be given bank statements and a box of records, and we'd have to manually do a bank reconciliation. Um, whereas now on zero, obviously you've got the bank feed, so um, trainees aren't wasting time trying to get the bank to reconcile. It's already reconciled. It's all done. It's all posted to the correct places. So it makes the review process a lot easier and the preparation a lot easier. Okay, so it's some themes there. We've got obviously the digital adoption. We've got the um, better ways of working internally and getting more efficiencies. And always sort of an accounts preparation always used, like sort of the term makes me laugh because I always think it's fixing data or finding data in order to get the accounts production through. So we call it accounts prep and it's really just fix it so we can get it through our sausage machine. Um, so yeah, so I, I think that, that that's interesting. And going back to you know, it was the, the stat accounts and things like that that we used to do. Now Ben touched something on on client education, and and I think we, we've probably all felt a little bit overwhelmed by the ecosystem from time to time. So back five six years ago, when we're saying we sort of got involved with it, there was like maybe two hundred apps that were linked to an ecosystem. We're probably nine hundred to a thousand um, by twenty twenty one. One of the fears, I think, is that um, we we talked about how accounts are programmed before we came on air, right? And um, accounts like to be absolute in things. So I like to be trained and understand, and then I can go and talk. And then we've got something growing at that sort of speed. You can't understand and know everything. For you guys, um, 
in terms of that client education and your own education, have, have you have you limited what you're going to concentrate on in terms of that ecosystem and not get sort of too mesmerized by something new and, and, and flashy? Because I think there's a real, we're all susceptible to that um, in terms of seeing something new and I'm going to get involved in that and take her eye off the ball on the basics. How, what are your guys' thoughts on that? I think for me, I like getting excited by that new shiny thing that's out there. And it's thankfully I've got like, you know, the team that pulled me back a bit. Um, I think if it wasn't for them, I'd be signing up to every app going at the moment. But, well, you know, the, the main focus is, you don't want to mention the C word, but obviously COVID, you, you focus on the key area that's going to help people at the moment in time. So like a year, two years ago, you focus on the, the manual bookkeeping side of things, enter and stuff manually and look at that area. So I think for us, it's internally and externally, trying to understand the problems right here, right now. Uh, telling clients you know we can fix that and then also us internally right we need to make sure we know that best solution but then that best solution might be out of date from that for the, in six months time so it's constantly moving that educational piece so as much as you can't get excited by that new shiny thing you still need to look at that little glisten in your eye and think hang on a minute is that an improvement or is that me just getting a bit too excited yeah just caught you on a, caught you on a day that you need to be inspired by something yeah. what about you ben yeah, so I was I was the same actually when I started three years ago. I went through that twelve month period of signing up to anything and everything, um, and not just from an overwhelming point of view, but from a financial point of view. I six months in, I had so many direct debits with all these softwares coming out. I had no idea what they were, um, so I eventually pulled back a bit. And and it is difficult, you know. You you hear these big announcements from all these different groups that were in of, of new softwares, and people mention something, and you you sort of quickly look it up, and oh, that that could be handy. So it is difficult, but I think what you need to do is um, have your sort of basic app stack to cover the main areas that you work with regularly and then, you know, sec secure that solidly and then just be open to the idea that there will be new stuff coming along. Um, but it's going to be impossible to know every sort of piece of software out there. And the problem is you'll have clients who come to you and mention a software that you've never heard of yourself. Um, and sometimes it can be quite embarrassing to sort of market yourself as a cloud digital based firm and then a client tells you a bit of software that you've never heard of. Um, and I think it's trying to educate clients that, okay, these are the basics we work with and we know well, but of course there's going to be others. And if you find something, let us know and we can look into it with you. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been a funny journey. So it wasn't just the actual interest of time. It was the financial burden it gave yeah. you as well by that's exciting. I'll use that. And. I think that's the area that a lot of people are too afraid to actually talk about is the financial cost of these softwares and subscriptions and memberships and, and they add up very quickly and if you don't have a use for them or, or a structure to charge on for them or you know make efficiencies to, to make up those costs, they can become quite heavy for a small yeah. firm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What about you, Nicola? So we're still at the start of our cloud um, journey, really. Um, so we've just started kind of trialing apps and like what Ben said, we've now got an app stack in place. And even though we haven't been doing it too, too long, you, we're already starting to see some trends on the areas that clients are really interested in and what they're not. So credit control and forecasting are probably are too big at the minute. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I think obviously with everything going on, those two areas are big anyway with COVID and people trying to recover their money. People want to know what their cash flow is looking like. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we just use our app stack too. I'm trying to advise and yeah. It's going well. <laughs> I think, there, I think there, there, there is the odd app which will come along, right, which is like worth getting invested in and spending time in. But there's a lot of apps which come in as well, which are, you know, in a similar theme to apps that are already there. So it's, it's a similar app to, to what's there. And I think it's difficult for those. And uh, going back to Ben's point about being surprised by a, a client because they know an app, mm -hmm. I think we are getting more tech savvy clients, you know, and I, tech savvy is probably the wrong word, tech aware clients who are aware that there's some ways of using tech and they might have found one that maybe some of the same sectors mentioned and although we've got like a thousand in an ecosystem you know, there's tens of thousands who are connected to the likes of zero and qbo and free agent who do their own little integration don't go through the the full path of being a partner so i, I we all we've got to be with the apps that we choose is probably just one step ahead of our uh, clients as long as we're one step that's enough um for mo most of the time but yeah i think it's um it's interesting you've all sort of started to work on your own app stack 
what's going to work for the majority of your clients. And yes, if there's opportunities then to, to work with other apps as they come along because they're really useful, that's, that's great. And you've got a service and a process. But Ben, one thing you said there about people picking up the app and then not having a service or a process or a price if it's going to go outward or what the efficiency gain is for getting it. I think there's so many firms fall into that trap. The vendors won't want to listen to this, but I think the, uh, the, the firms do fall into that trap of let's sign up, we'll make it work. And then 12 months down the line, you've still got you know a bunch of direct debits, as you say. So interesting. Right. So thank you very much. That's been uh, a lot of change there um, since you, you know, in the last couple of years that we've been speaking about there. Right. Next question. Good, good. I think this will be some good healthy debate. What do you see the role of an accountant being in the future? And actually, we've probably seen this slightly accelerated, I think, with COVID as to we've, we've seen all sorts of different uh, conversations happening. And I think the accountant, um, certainly from what I've seen in the UK, translating all of this HMRC um, guidance that we're getting have really put themselves back into that, you know, very valued role from a business owner's perspective um, for those that have been continually updating their clients on what they can, what they're eligible for and how, how they can utilize it for the better of their business. So Aaron, I'll start with you on, on, you know, what do you see the role of an accountant being in the future? And you can make this a bit personal because you've got a slightly different role being a cloud solutions architect. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah. My title is definitely nothing associated with it, with accountancy. Like, when you kind of go on on a site, say what your, your job role is, that doesn't pop up. <laughs> um, so I think that the, the big change is that there's no there's no traditional accountant anymore. There's no kind of stereotype to what an accountant is. I think we're all trying to break that mold and break that stereotype. And my, you know, my role's gone from preparing that accounts or you know, manually entering information into accounting software to being an integral part of the finance team and understanding what they're doing is it's not kind of anything to do with the numbers it's more how are you processing um, and how can we digitize you and bring some tech in to move your time away from that because it's they've got the finance team you know but we want them to get the benefits that we're seeing from implementing zero from like our outsourced bookkeeping clients and it's it's been that extension of the finance team to help them not get left behind because uh, as much as us as accountants are moving forward, there's still our clients that aren't as tech, tech aware sometimes. To, so it's, yeah, it's, it's making sure that they're getting the same knowledge as us because we've got that wider glance at it. Yeah, because those finance teams, that are, you know, the, the business are big enough to have a finance team. We've worked in one way on one process on a couple of systems for a long time. And that could be a system which is, you know, 10, 15, 20 years old. And completely unaware. So you're, so you're, you're seeing yourself going in and being that sort of advisor in terms of there's some better ways of working. Let me help you understand what you need. Let me help you then implement the systems and, and support you on those systems and, and be your eyes and ears in the modern digital world as to what might help you going forward. Definitely. That's it. It's sitting there and talking to the finance team and understanding what they do on a day to day basis. As, as much as they say, yeah, I've got all this to do. When you sit down and you say, right, so what do you do? And what don't you like and it's always the time you know i spend this time that time and it is because as you say it's a system 10 15 years old that's always been used in the same way and even if you can't digitize it there's probably a better way to use it and it's, it's that outside perspective i think us as accountants give whether it is for numbers um, or if it is just for internal processes to say look there's a better way of doing this let's uh, let's try and either use tech or just optimize what you're using at the moment Okay, so for, for you, for you, and where you see it, uh, uh, part of an accounting role is that systems advisory, app advisory, uh, business process efficiency. That that's a world that you're seeing. Definitely, okay. definitely, yeah. Perfect, great stuff. Nicola, what about you? Um, so when so previously, I would sort of speak to clients once a year when we've done their stat accounts, or maybe quarterly when we've done their VAT returns. But it yeah. would just be here are your accounts, here's a tax, you owe X amount, and that would be that. Whereas now it's completely changed. I'd say we're more of an integral part of their business. So if they need any advice or anything, then they would come to us first. And also we're in regular contact, whereas beforehand it was annually. Now it's probably monthly, to be honest. We're trying to push out more management accounts. But again, we're not just preparing management accounts. We're then explaining the figures and seeing yeah. how can we help you and 
so yeah it's a lot there's a lot different um but it's more enjoyable because i think you get to know the client more and their business and it's just yeah i i prefer it to be honest yeah, it'd be a lot more connection, really, because if you regularly, you know, give them some sort of insight into their own numbers and, and as, as a non-accountant business owner, you know, I'm pretty good with the numbers, but there's always something which I don't quite understand or can't really work out how it's going to be accounted for longer term. So there is always some insight that we can get from from those conversations. So so you're, you're saying more more connected yeah. role going forward um, yeah. for accountants. So, and I agree with you. I think that's a, that's a really good point. Ben, what about you? I think, um, I think overall just actual business guidance as opposed to just doing the tax calculations. Um, and I think I've seen a lot of this of new potentials coming and starting to ask, you know, can you do this and can you do that? And, and you have to stop them and sort of mention that actually that is going into the, the sort of guidance advisory area as yeah. opposed to what an accountant traditionally does. And although, you know, we, we then say we can do that and we will do that. I and mean, that's what you want us to do. But I think there's this blurred line now between accountant and business advisors um, from our side and from client sides, and, and they don't necessarily realise that they're moving into that area because they now just expect it. Can you advise me on this? Can you guide me on that? Um, as opposed to can you tell me how much tax I owe? Um, so I think that's going to be an interesting transition, which I don't like the A word, but we were warned about this a couple of years ago, and, and it is naturally moving into that area without people realising. Um, and also that's going to be heavily based on cloud and apps and tech um, a lot more than people I think realize at the moment. Um, and I think the problem with, with certainly for small practices like mine is you, you need a certain specialist level of knowledge with tech and apps um, because otherwise it can go very wrong. So it's not something that everybody can just dabble in without doing much research or, or education. Yeah. But the problem with a small firm is even the, the sort of base level bookkeepers need a certain level of knowledge because they have to use that app. So when they're using things like Revolut or um, Soldo, they need to understand how that works to flow through to zero and do the bookkeeping. So it's not enough to just say, okay, there's only a team of six. One of us needs to be the tech app sort of expert because that, that would be a full-time role alone, but then they have to do a certain level of education of everybody to, to get involved because it's, it's no longer just one area within a practice, it's the whole practice. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's going to be quite an interesting transition of all accountants and bookkeepers becoming to a certain level, app and, and, app and cloud, not necessarily experts, but to a decent degree. Yeah, they're like a foundation level of it's going to be the base of what we work to. Uh, and I think this has been part of the issue actually with the adoption of cloud in general I think it's been by well, lots of firms it's been seen as a bit of a an add-on to someone's job um, and also I think I always think you've got to have like 20 20 30 percent coverage of your firm needs to know the minimum in order to get you running but it starts at like one to five percent uh, trying to move everything along in this cloud but sometimes firms don't understand the, the returns you can get longer term um, so I think there's some education with that as well. And, and going on to that word, you know, the A word, the advisory word, and it's very vague and, and things like that. But we were talking before the session, weren't we, around, I certainly, the world I'm in, I certainly see this systems advisory, this uh, app advisory, this world of pro business process efficiency is a huge opportunity, mm -hmm. certainly around the finance function initially for accounting firms to get involved with. And then I think we'll see accounting firms get into operational systems tills and you know much more than they are currently there are firms doing that already but i'll see i think that's a, an obvious area the secondary area is the business coaching and i think ben you'd notice this where you know i i've worked with business coaches and they want all your numbers off you and back when we we did it with a particular coach we were sort of making the numbers up each quarter and then having a conversation about our accountability and targets based on numbers which made no sense um, so it's a bit of a pointless thing but i've always felt if you've got the numbers in monthly there's an accountability and a coaching if you want to do that and if you've got the the type of um resource who could do that but i think ben you mentioned you had something similar along those lines didn't you mm, yeah so recently in the last few weeks had had a client who used a business coach um i say used past tense because they have actually moved to us but the reason <laughs> was um that business coach was on a weekly basis asking us for numbers asking us for tax amounts and, and due dates and and in the end, it was the client who looked up and said, is this not just something you can do for us because they're coming to you for all the answers? 
Um, and actually, there was a red flag, and I'm not tarring all business advisors and coaches on with not this, all, but no. there was um, there was a case with this same client a few we- uh, a couple of months ago, who said I need to become a limited company, and I asked why, and the business coach had said to become that registered, I had to go into a limited company. All right. And I, I did laugh, but I did explain why I was laughing. I wasn't laughing at them, but it- it's things like this that make you realise actually these are areas we can. Uh, help with without realizing we can and and we were mentioning earlier that there are no courses or topics within becoming an accountant to train for coaching and guidance Um, and so people are scared and people presume it's not something you can do and should stay away from Um, but I think you you just need to sort of dip your toe in it and you come to realize actually this is stuff that I can advise on and guide on um, without realizing that we can. Perfect. So yeah, you're dead right. There's, there's, there's a lot of opportunity. The closer we are to being connected, the closer we are to the data, we can offer a lot more, whether it's you individually or the firm starts to invest in those areas so they can offer those services. You know, it's, it's a, but there is a real opportunity to do a lot more around this whole very vague advisory world. Okay, guys. Well, just to bring us to the end. So we've talked a little bit about the past, the present and the future. Uh, I hope everyone who's been watching has taken a, a little bit of interest from that because I think there's been some really good points. One last question I'm going to get into. Um, we've only got a couple of minutes, but um, is being a vendor cloud champion going to be enough on its own going forward? So we've heard zero heroes and uh, QBO advisors and all the different types of, of, of elements there. What do you guys think on this? Is is being just knowing? A, oh. One sec, I'm gonna. Pause record. Okay, guys, so, so final question is um, around Zero Heroes and uh, QBO advisors and, and Sage and free agent equivalents, the cloud champion. Is knowing just that core cloud accounting vendor enough in your opinion going forward? Uh, Nicola, I'll start with you. Um, I would say no, definitely not. Um, I think you can do a lot of training on Xero in QBO and actually you don't pick up half of it. So I think it teaches you how to kind of raise sales invoices, reconcile bank accounts, but it doesn't teach you anything about the add-ons or the the added um, tech work that you can get out of it. So... um, I would say I'm our zero champion here. And actually by doing all the app work that we've been doing, I've learned so much more by doing that than actually learning how to use zero. Yeah. And we've got a couple of clients that are really good on zero. Don't get me wrong. But when we do a digital health check on them, we can always find something that they can improve. Yeah. And with those types of clients it's quite good because they're impressed. So they think they use it really well. And actually we can come back at them and say, Oh, you don't do this. Do you, have you heard of this add on? And they're quite impressed by it. So I think, yeah, there's definitely more to it than just being a vendor. Yes, absolutely. Great. So there's that finance function view, isn't there, there to consider. Ben, what about you? Uh, No, I agree, actually. Um, And also, I think it's from the angle of just using cloud accounting is is almost seen as a basic that everybody is already doing now. And clients are coming to us with cloud accounting already in place. So I think it's that next level now going forward of, okay, everybody uses zero now. Um, or QuickBooks or anything else. Um, now's the time to do apps and add-ons and everything else. And I think we're seeing this big wave of, of every day on LinkedIn, I'm seeing posts of I'm now a partner of this, I'm a partner of that. Mm-hmm. But it's very easy to become a partner. You just fill in a form and you are suddenly a partner. But it doesn't mean you know how to use that software. I'm not like, picking at people because I've, I've made that mistake myself of just signing up any forms and saying I'm now a, I'm this software um, partner and this software partner but it's how to actually use them. And because the problem is, you know, the moment you advertise you're a partner of a software, if somebody comes to you and says, okay, great, what does that mean? How do I use it? And you don't have a clue because all you've done is sign a PDF. <laughs> it's, it's a bit embarrassing. So I think it is taking things that ne- next level of not just saying we use zero or we use this app, but actually knowing how it works and how, how you're going to use it to systemize and efi- make a business more efficient. And that's, that's I think, where we're heading and, and where we need to be going. Great stuff. So again, your similar opinion, basic is a good start, but we need to keep growing with this area, right? Okay. Aaron, what about you? Yeah, I think I agree. I think what what we've all said is that we don't see, you know, we, we see the efficiencies gained through these add-ons and 
it's not just about zero. You know, zero really is that hub for all that financial data. And in theory, all you want to be doing in there is potentially your sales invoices if you've not got a CRM system or a website that sales have been raised through and reconciling the bank everywhere all the other apps is where you get that time saving that efficiency and even the better insights to, to kind of gain that real-time data so just being kind of a zero quickbooks free agent champion it's it's not enough because our vision definitely our vision here at Garvin Nelly is not to just focus and try and sell, sell, sell the, the core platform is to look at that whole finance function and say that, yes, we can put you onto cloud, but you're not going to gain your massive amounts of efficiencies just by using that. It's the extra add-ons we see that are where the efficiencies and it helps us because those, those add-ons are designed to streamline the processes, meaning in theory, there's less chance for something to go wrong when it goes into the software. So if we're involved in the setup, we can tell it where to go and, and you know, hopefully they don't dig into there and change what we've done. There's always that risk. There's always that. Yeah. Risk. <laughs> right, guys, that brings us to the end of the session. Um, thanks a lot for all of your insights and some of your experiences and, and uh, your, in and your, your view of where, where you think the different roles and the different areas are going to go. So, Thanks a lot. Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot taken from this session and uh, I'll speak to you guys soon. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers all. Cheers.